Hey guys, and welcome to my 1-99 and 120 runecrafting guide for 2021. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. As usual, we start off with the useful XP boosts, the Wise Perk, up to 4% bonus experience with a cap of 50,000 per day. This depends on the rank of the actual perk you're putting on an offhand weapon. We then have Pulse and Cinecores, which can be stacked up to 10%. We then have Torch to Incense Sticks, which can be overloaded on for a total of 2% bonus XP. The Refer Friend Scroll for 10%. The Wisdom Aura for 2.5. Double Experience Weekend, of course. The Clan Cat Boost, which can be stacked up to 6%. The Inspired Genius Relic for 2%. The Premier Club Artifact for 10%. And the Desert Pantheon Aura for another 10%. Runecrafting has quite the amount of useful items, the first of which being the Master Runecrafter's Outfit, costing 4 4,000 rune spam points per piece or 500 thaler per piece. This gives you 1% bonus experience per piece and 5% for the total set if you have all pieces. The Ephra outfit is an outfit that can be obtained through treasure hunter or through invention when crafted at level 20 invention and 80 rune crafting. You start getting fragments to craft these outfits at around level 70 rune crafting. Now the infinity version of the Ephra outfit is a better version if you combine both the lol, blood and death version together. As you can see, the Infinity version can store up to 12 Pure Essence instead of 6, which is a lot more, and has a better chance of pouncing on degrading, and it has a higher chance of a double siphon rune span, and it also gives you daily teleports. Now, all of these outfits also retain the Runecrafting Robes, Wicked Hood, and Moriotania Legs effect when in the bank. The Moriotania Legs simply give you a 10% chance to craft an extra Blood Rune, giving extra experience and the extra Blood Rune. This only requires you to complete the Moriotania Medium Task set. With the Catalyst Fragment, a reward from Sliska's Endgame, your pouches degrade slower. Combined with the Infinity Ephra outfit, your pouches will no longer degrade. The Siphoning Aura gives you a higher chance to siphon in rune span. Runecrafting urns can be filled as a player runecrafts and be teleported away for experience automatically in your settings. Now, the great thing about these is they're not that expensive and they can be activated using Pure Essence. The only thing that doesn't fill them is combination runes like Lava Runes. Now, you also have a variant of the urns that can also be filled with runecrafting experience, being these effigies from the Effigy Incubator, although they don't necessarily award you with regular experience like the urns do. Urns can be automatically teleported under gameplay, interfaces, inventory, and then tick off the auto-teleport urns and accumulators when full option. We also have two Power Burst potions, being the Power Burst of Sorcery, doubling your runes per essence for 10 seconds, really good for money making and XP, and the Power Burst of Acceleration, allowing you to indefinitely surge and blade a die for about 6 seconds. We also have the Brooch of the Gods that can store up to 1,000 urns and has the Divine Blessing Spirit effect that gives you some invention components and stuff. Not that special, but yeah, if you have it, you have it. The Demonic Skull gives you 3.5 times experience in the Abyss when runecrafting, although this thing costs 550k and it will add to the risk in the wilderness when doing the Abyss runecrafting method. We then have the five different runecrafting pouches. Now, these runecrafting pouches can be obtained by Abyssal Creatures in the Abyss, except for the massive one, which has to be bought from Wizard Phoenix for 1,000 runespan points. Wizard Korvac can return your lost pouches in the rune crafting guild and he also sells the large and giant pouches so you don't need to grind to get them from the abyssal creatures per se. Now the massive pouch can be bought from wizard phoenix for 1000 rune spam points. Now what people don't know is that the traveling merchant occasionally sells the unstable air room for 250k that will give you 5000 rune spam points. If you're looking to get this item I recommend joining the whirlpool D&D discord which I'll link in the description below. Next up the wilderness sword which is the edgeville quick teleport for abyss rune crafting. Really useful, easy to get, just simply do the wilderness tasks guide link in the description below. The Abyssal Familiars can hold more room per essence. These are the Abyssal Parasite, Lurker, and Titan. Just use them, they're cheap and easy to use. We also have runecrafting potions, including the Extreme Potion, which can boost your level by quite a bit, giving you access to high level runes earlier and boosting your runes multiplier because that is something that goes up when you level up. More on that later. And we have two archaeology relics. If you're curious on how to get these, check the link in the description below. But I would say the Nexus mod is 100% worth getting. Very good and will increase your experience per hour as it teleports you to the middle of the abyss. Here's a list of all the quests that will give you a runecrafting experience reward. Now keep in mind some of these quests actually do require a certain runecrafting level and other stats. 
But just so you know, it's on screen. Okay, so the room multiply is important to understand because it can boost your money per hour and the amount of runes you craft per pure essence. As you can see, the higher level you are, the more runes you'll craft per pure essence. And this can even go higher if you boost your level using extreme rune crafting potions. Now in the Ranch Out of Time, which is a part of the player and farm, you can actually boost your runes per essence multiplier by one and two if you add farm totems to a pen with a Apoterosaur inside. If you want the tier two version, you're going to need a farm totem on two different pens, and they should both have the Arcane Apoterosaur inside. All right, into the training methods we go. Levels one to 10, you want to do two different quests. Now, one of these quests is actually a requirement for the entirety of this runecrafting guide, which is the Abyss mini quest. This quest is required for training, so you're going to have to do it anyway if you want to train at least somewhat fast, and you don't want to stick to rune span the entire time. And rune mysteries will also give you some experience, and both of these quests will launch you up to level 10 and are ready to go for runecrafting. All right, as for the setup, here's the setup you want to be using levels one to nine, 99 and beyond for abyss rune crafting now if you don't have these items like the F outfit, you simply don't use them if you're watching this and you're at a lower level. Same thing for the rune crafting urns and the rune pouches. If you don't have the level for the required item, simply don't use them. Now the method itself is really straightforward and you can see a summary of all the steps on screen now. This is the exact method you're going to be using levels 1 to 99 and perhaps beyond to level 120 if you want to make some money. The only option that would be different is option 10. If you don't have a wilderness sword, you can use an amulet of glory or the edgeful lodestone. Before you start off, buy yourself a demonic skull from the Wizard of Zamrak for that 3.5 times experience and right click him, choose configure and then choose the option teleport to the abyss to make it your left click option so that you no longer need to right click this wizard. Okay, so to do this method, you want to load up a bank preset so that you can quickly bank. You do this by getting everything you need in your inventory, being all of your pouches, perhaps your urn, perhaps a rune crafting boosting potion if you want to use those. Here we go. And you want your armor on, your life necklace, your demonic skull, and you're familiar with pure essence as well. Go to the settings wheel, go to one or two, and then tick off all of these three boxes, overwrite, and now you've created your preset. But you're not done yet, go to Beast of Burden and save that as well, because you want to have that pure essence in there. Now, if you were to, let's say, throw my stuff into the bank, I have nothing in my inventory, I click my bank, I press to, boom, I have all my stuff. Now with the rune crafting method, you teleport over here, you come here from Edgeville, you go to your bank, you could blade a dive here, you press your preset button once, then you press one, two, three, you fill the few pouches, load your preset again, fill the bigger pouch, load your preset again, five, load your preset again, six, fill your outfit if you have it, and then once more, load your presets, and you are ready to go. So that's how you set up and bank quickly. Now the method itself is fairly simple. Try and use your mobility abilities as often as you can, get inside the inner ring of the abyss, craft your runes, teleport out, bank, and repeat. Now if you're using the power boost of sorcery, you want to click it just before you craft your runes, and you can use it every two or three runs, as a run takes about 60 seconds without the archaeology relic because you need to get to the inner ring, either by mining or squeezing through a tube, which will be significantly slower at the lower skill levels. Just something to keep in mind. A run should take you around a minute, and I'm going to be basing the base experience rates on that in just a second. But if you're using the Nexus mod archaeology relic which teleports you to the inner ring straight away you can literally get runs that are around 37 to 45 seconds which is very fast now to get the nexus mod relic all you really need to do is have level 80 dungeoneering and i believe level 68 archaeology and you need to buy a chaotic gate stone from the dungeoneering reward shop for 25,000 dungeoneering tokens now you combine this chaotic gate stone with the restored chaos star artifact to create the abyssal gate stone which you can offer to your mysterious monolith and get the relic power which only costs 150 monolith energy and that's all you really need to know about abyss rune crafting sure there's a couple of things like that surge across the wilderness ditch which is actually quite important and the barging on those skeletons which i previously mentioned these can really reduce your times and make the run fast and boost your experience per hour and the final useful thing is of course to use a mobile perk to reduce the cooldown on your mobility abilities like surge and bladed dive although this isn't required it will just help in general if you ever want to repair your regular pouches you can repair them at the npc in the middle of the abyss 
Here's an overview showing you all of the different runes you're going to be making and the basic speed rates you can get by using a demonic skull and getting around 1 minute runs. As you can see, blood runes only seem to be 120k experience per hour, but in reality, if you are getting faster runs, you're using the powers of sorcery, the relic, and so on, you can get all the way up to 430,000 runecrafting experience per hour. Yes, you can get that much XP, but I'm showing you the base rates because there are too many variables. Do you have the unlocks? Bladed Dive, are you budging on the skeletons, are you using the Parabras of Sorcery, do you have mobile or not, are you using the Relic, and so on. And the Blood Runes are going to be very, very profitable. Do those to level 99 100%. Next up, the Soul Alter. Now this does require the Fight Club quest to be complete, but it is a very good AFK method for runecrafting, around 290 to 400,000 runecrafting experience per hour. It's very similar to the Abyss method, except once inside you go into the Soul Alter Rift, and you basically charge up your soul runes first, and then after you've charged them, which is the AFK part, you craft them. Now, as you can see, it takes quite some time to charge up these runes, and once they're done, you click on the altar in the middle. I hope that makes sense, just want to be clear, that's how you do them. And then obviously, you go to Edgefell using your Wilderness Sword, and you repeat. Really simple. Now, there's another method of doing it, and you can use various teleports, but I like using the Wicked Hood teleport, teleporting to the Soul Altar, going inside, depositing your Pure Essence, and then charging up the Altar, but you do not craft the runes. In this method, you charge up the Altar to 100 charges total, which will take you a few inventories or a few banking trips, and once you're done, that's when you go to the Abyss with your Demonic Skull for that bonus experience boost, and then craft the runes. So in short, it's the exact same thing, except you do it five times, you save the time running to the abyss by charging and then crafting them straight away, and then you craft a chunk of those runes, 100 charges, in one go. It's like a big XP drop. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, check out my full Soul Alter guide in the description below. Now, Rune Span is, in my opinion, outdated content and not something I'm going to include in this guide. Not any longer with the relics and stuff that came out for Runecrafting. Runecrafting is just so much faster through the Abyss with the new Power Burst Potion. Sure, you can train Runecrafting AFK here for like 90k experience per hour, like 90 plus. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's worth doing and it's a waste of your time. Just do the Soul Alter if you want to AFK at the higher levels. If you are interested in the Rune Span, I'll link my old Runecrafting guide in the description below for more information as I won't be covering it in this guide. As for other alternative methods that you can use for training, there's something else that's extremely good, up to 2 million runecrafting experience per hour, and that is the monthly D&D known as the Effigy Incubator. Now this method does require level 85 runecrafting and the Desperate Measures quest to be complete, but once you do have it complete, you're going to get some big, big gains every month. It basically consists of grabbing 7 effigies in the middle and then gathering fragments. For runecrafting's sake, these are the cyan-colored fragments. What you basically do is you get Gather these fragments, you'll need 20 per effigy, and then you craft the effigies and then incubate them. That's all it really is about. But you can also simply just gather the fragments and gain the runecrafting experience. And this is, yes, indeed, 2 million runecrafting experience per hour. It is actually ridiculously good, but the D&D only lasts 5 minutes. Now, this D&D can be reset using a monthly D&D token, which means you're able to do this twice every single month, given that you have the D&D reset tokens. That's 10 minutes of big boy runecrafting experience. Again, if you need slightly more information, check out my separate guide linked in the description below. The final thing I'd like to mention is making Vizwax every single day. You can do this for money. You get here by using your Wicked Hood teleport, or just go to the top of the Wizard's Tower and enter the middle portal, which is the Runecrafting Guild. In this guild, you're going to be doing a method that requires level 50 runecrafting, and that is creating Vizwax using the Rune Goldberg machine. In this machine, you want to have a selection of preferably cheap runes that will give you a certain amount of Vizwax. Now, even though the 99 skill cap can tell you the best rune, if that rune is expensive, for example, death runes, you might be better off getting a little less Vizvax and using cheaper runes instead to increase your net profit. For example, here where I was using death runes and mud runes, I'm going to switch these out for fire, water, and air runes and still get a decent chunk of Vizwax, yet use way less money in runes than with the mud, cosmic, and death runes, because it just doesn't seem to make sense. Look at that, still 88 Vizwax, that's over 1.1 million GP, boom. And with that being said, we have come to the end of my updated runecrafting guide. If you enjoyed this video and found it interesting, please leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.